In the last video we ended up with our basics Redux flow here where we had an initial state of a number of one and then we dispatched some actions to add and subtract values to that uh, value. And as you can see, this works fine. Now, typically your application doesn't use a number as a state. It might use an object instead. And you might want to change your values in that object. It also might use arrays. And since objects and arrays are reference types, which means they are no primitives which get copied, but instead have one place in memory and then pointers pointing to that place. We want to make sure that we're changing the state in an immutable way, which means we're always taking the old state, make a copy, edit this copy and return a new state so that the old state stays untouched. Let's see how we do that. I'll make some changes here. I'll create a new constant which I'll name initial state. And this will be a JavaScript object. This initial state here will, let's say, have a result of one. So before we had this initial state of one, now this is one property in the initial state object. And then it has the last values array, which is empty at the beginning, like this. Next, in my reducer here, I can use the ES6 addition of default values or default parameters in methods to set my state equal to initial state in the case that no state is added or is sent to the reducer. So once we dispatch actions, Redux will automatically pass the current state to the reducer. So the initial state is then ignored. But if we first set up our store and we don't have a state therefore yet, then the initial state object here is used to initialize the state. That's just some ES6 work. And if you're not sure how all of this works, well, I got an ES6 video on this channel and I even got an ES6 course on Udemy. So you might want to check these out if you want to learn more. Links in the description. So initial state is set up here. And since I'm setting it up here, I can remove the second argument in the create store method. So now I'm only passing the reducer because the reducer on its own handles the initialization of the state here. So far, so good. We changed the state to be an object and we changed the way we initialize the state. Now with that, I want to use this object to then change the state in the switch statement here whenever we dispatch an action. Now I'll leave the action the way we created them. All the actions remain the same. We still only pass values as payloads. These are not adjusted to objects. There is no need to do so because we're still only adding 100. We're not adding an object with 100. That's important to realize. The payload here is always just a value you want to change in the reducer is the place where you then have to figure out how to correctly change the state. So how would we correctly change the state for the add action here? Well, we take the state object here and we could do the following thing. We could simply state, say that state result is equal to action.payload or is equal to old state result plus action.payload. Now, if I save this and go back to the application, you see that my store is updated. The result is 101, 123, and then not a number because the subtract action here hasn't been updated yet. So this looks fine. Ignore that the last values is not updated because I'm not implementing this yet. So the result is updated, but here's an interesting thing. Even though we see result 101 here, if we expand the object, we see result 123. And the reason is because we're not doing this in an immutable way. I'm simply taking the old property and changing the value. Therefore, all old objects or the state in the older objects here, like the first action here, 
is also changed because it's one and the same object. It's the same place in the memory. And hence, we don't have an immutable approach here. Now, why is an immutable approach better? Because currently, we got no way of getting back to an older state. We can't see how our state changed throughout the application. And therefore, we're back in the world where handling the state is a bit more complicated because it's always hard to know what the current state of the application is. So a better way is to not do it this way, not directly manipulate the property, but instead create a new state here. I do this by creating a new JavaScript object. So state is now a new JavaScript object. It's no longer the state we're passing here. It's a new JavaScript object. And in this JavaScript object, I wanna use all the properties of the old state. Now a quick and easy way in ES6 to get all the properties of an object and add it as properties to a new object, exactly what I wanna do here is to use the spread operator. The spread operator are three dots and here I take the state and this may basically tells JavaScript or ES6, give me all the properties of the state object, this object here, which has a result and a last value property and add them as properties to this new object. So in this specific case here, that's exactly the same as if I would have written state result and then state last values. But of course I would have needed to also set this equal to result and then here to last values like this. Now that's much longer and the big problem of course is if we change the state here, we have to change it all over the place here. So that is a much better way to achieve the same. Now, of course, I don't want to simply get the old properties. I want to change the result property. That is why I now add result and set it equal to be state result. This again is the old state here. So the result of the old state and add my payload to it, action payload. That is why I simply pass the value here as a payload and not some kind of object. Because the dispatching here or the action is not responsible for passing the finished new state object. That's the job of the reducer. So the reducer always works with the payloads, which are types like numbers, strings, maybe objects of course, but never the new state. So now I set this or I created this new value consisting of the old result property and the payload of my action. And I'm setting this to the result property. Now, if you watch carefully, you might think, well, I'm spreading my old state object here. This old state object has a result and has last values. And now I'm setting result again. So now I kind of created something like this. Result would be state result, last values would be state last values. So I have result twice. And that exactly is what happens. But that's no problem because the latter result property, so the last one I specify here, overrides all prior properties with the same name which is the behavior I want. I first spread all the properties of my old state and then I override the ones I want to override. Now, as you can see, I'm not touching the last values yet. And if my initial state would have much more values, some of them which are never touched by an add action, well then these properties would never be overwritten in the term of this add action. So if I save this, reload my application here, you now see store updated with results 101 and 123. But now if I expand them, you see that the value actually isn't changed because a brand new object is created all the time. And we don't see the old object being overwritten instead as happened before. Now with that, let's also implement this for the subtraction here. So let's copy this 
simply subtract the payload, save this. Now you can see the values being changed here. Again, the result in the old objects is not touched. And with that, we get an immutable way of using strings, of using objects, excuse me, of using objects as our state. Now we also have this last values array here. So let's say in this last values array here, I want to store, well, the value that was used in this action. So I could use my newly created state. Remember, I'm creating a new state here and set last values or use this last values here to push action.payload, payload, like this. And I'll also take this and do the same for the subtract action. I'll save this, reload my application. You see everything works here. You see the array here is growing. We have an array where we have 100, 22 and 80. Oh, again, we have the same problem as before. Even though we get the information that this array has one element, it actually has three because it was changed after the time this object was created because I'm not doing this in an immutable way. I'm simply taking my state and then I push a new value here. But since this last values array is the one we spread from the old state, we're always using the same array which is stored somewhere in memory. We're not recreating it. So whilst the object, the state object is handled in an immutable way, the property, this last values array here, is not. And this certainly is not the way we want to do it. So we want to do this in an immutable way too. And the way to do it is to overwrite the last values property, just like we overwrite result here. And then set this to be equal to a new array, where I again use the spread operator to spread out the old last values array. Spread operators can be used on both arrays and objects to either fetch out all the properties in the case of objects or all the elements in the case of arrays. So state last values fills this array with all the old values. And then I add a new value action payload. So that's kind of pushing in an immutable way. And I'll do the same in the subtract case. Now, important thing, in this case here, I could of course remove this spreading of my state object because I'm overwriting all the properties that exist anyways. But I'm leaving it here because in reality, you will oftentimes have a case where your action doesn't change all the properties of your state. We might have an additional property like let's say username here, set it equal to max. And this is never touched. So therefore we want to still spread the state and only change the values we need to change. Now, if I save this and reload my application again, well, we see username is always the same. The array contains one, two, and then three elements, which is of course the case in the last object. But now the first object is also correct. And at this point of time where we changed the state for the first time, we only have the first value that was added, 100. In the second place here, we have 122. And then the last time we dispatch an action, we get 122 and then 80, and the result is changed appropriately too. So that is how you handle objects and arrays in an immutable way in your Redux state. And that is a key thing to know and to use to make a predictable state or to have a predictable state in your application.